Welcome back, everyone. Now that we've got a good handle on linear analysis, we'll dive into nonlinear analysis, and our first step is going to be considering nonlinear geometry, which is also known as large deflection analysis. We'll begin today in ANSYS Mechanical. I already have a model defined. If we turn on the cross section for this beam, we can see that it is a circular section, the radius is 20 millimeters, and the length of this beam is one meter. I've already meshed it, so if I check my mesh, I've changed my default element size right here to 20 millimeters so that I have 50 elements along the length. My material is going to be standard structural steel and that's linear elastic. So let's set up our analysis. I'm going to first define my boundary conditions. So let's define a fixed end over here on this node and I'll apply that. And then I'll apply a concentrated moment at the far end over here. I'll apply that. I'll define this as components, and I'm going to make the Z component one. So that's one Newton millimeter. It's a very small moment. And I'm going to, before I hit solve, define a couple deformation features. So I'll define two directional deformations. This first one will be in the X axis. I'll hit F2 so I can rename that to directional deformation X. And this one will be defined in the Y axis. And I'll rename that too to directional deformation Y. Finally, I'll define my bending moment along the whole length. And instead of the total bending moment, let's do a directional bending moment about the Z axis because that's the direction of my concentrated moment at the end. So if I look at my results for this problem, I can see that my bending moment is one along the whole length. That's exactly what I would expect. Deformation in the X direction is zero and deformation in the Y direction is a very small number. Now you'll notice that this is to true scale. You may have it set that it'll go to auto scale so that you can actually see some deformation here. But of course that's scaled up by about 2.5 million times in this case. So I'll leave this as true scale because we'll be worried about in this case, what is the actual full displacement. Now when we're doing linear analysis, if I scale up my applied load, it will scale up my results by an equal amount. So let's take our moment and let's scale it up to a much larger number. So I'm gonna scale this up to one followed by seven zero. So one, zero, 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 zero. Hit enter and I'm going to solve that system again. So if I check my bending moment here, bending moment is still constant along the length, one E7, looks great. Directional de deformation is now scaled up by 10 million times in this case. Now notice that this is plotted to true scale now, so this is not scaled up. This is the true predicted deflection of the system. And the directional deformation in the X direction is still zero because zero scaled up by 10 million is still zero. Now, if we go back to that Y displacement deflection, this is very large for a one meter beam. It's displacing by 200 millimeters. This is not the correct representation of this system because we in fact have a large displacement. We also have large strains. So once we see large displacements and large strains, the basic finite element method, which is based off of small displacement, small strains is no longer applicable. So we need to change that assumption. To do that, we'll go to analysis settings here and we'll turn on something called large deflection right here. So I'll double click that. Once we turn on large displacement, your problem becomes a non-linear problem, even if you have perfectly linear elastic elements. So whenever you have a non-linear system, we'll have to check our solution to make sure that we're actually doing a iterative process to solve that. Now here it says my auto time stepping is program controlled. That's usually fine for very simple cases, but I usually like to turn this onto on and I'll define a variety of sub steps in which it's going to break my analysis into. So let's define my initial sub steps as 100 here, my minimum sub steps is 100, and my maximum sub, sub steps is 1000. Now what that means is at a minimum, it's going to divide up my load application into 100 smaller increments so that it will be solving this incrementally rather than applying all of that load all at once. And that is essential for nonlinear analysis. At most, it will break that up into 1000 different increments we probably won't get there, but let's just see what happens. So now I'll hit solve. So before I look at my results, I'd like to show a little bit something on the solution information here. So if we click solution information, here's my solver output. Usually not that interesting unless you have an error. I'm going to go to my force convergence. 
you can see all the iterations that it took to get to my final load application. So in this case, it took 274 iterations. Iterations is separate from the sub steps. So I, it looks like it's still using about 100 sub steps in here. Doesn't really say on this chart. Uh, but in each iteration, it's trying to get the force to converge below this blue line here. And in each case, it does. And it fully completes my time from zero to one. So we have a completed analysis, but we had to do 274 iterations to get there. Now let's check out a few of the results. My bending moment, still constant. That's actually exactly what we would expect with a constant moment here at the end. Now let's check the displacement in the Y direction. It's slightly less, approximately 197 millimeters up, but most importantly, we'll see a def deflection in the X direction. And in fact, there's an X direction displacement here of about 26 millimeters. So in the small displacement analysis, the entire length of this beam was actually stretching quite a bit because it def deflected in the Y direction by about 200 millimeters, but did not displace in the X direction at all. So using this large displacement analysis, it actually correctly incorporates that displacement in the X direction so that this beam is not stretching in any way. So let's add a new wrinkle to this problem and I'll go back to linear analysis. So I'll turn off my large displacement here and now I'm going to add an axial force to the end. So we'll take a force right here. We'll click on the end, we'll apply it. We'll define it by components and I, the axial force I'll put in the positive X direction and let's make that axial force 1 million newtons. Before I get too far, define a few more properties. I'd also like my axial force results and my shear force results. And for the shear force, let's look at the shear force in the Y axis. All right, so again, this is my linear elastic analysis. So I have turned off large displacement. My shear force, there's a little bit of weirdness going on at the end, but it's all practically zero within computer rounding errors. My axial force, as I'd expect, is one million constant along the whole length. Bending moment is still the same. Deformation in the Y direction is actually unchanged. It's about 200 millimeters and direction displacement in the X direction is about four millimeters being pulled out. Now for this linear analysis, my axial force and my bending moment are not interacting in any way, but in reality, we know they will interact because if the end of my beam has been displaced up to this point and I put an axial force on that, it will cause an additional moment about my base. That's something called P delta effects in structural engineering. So let's turn large displacement back on and we'll see that it automatically calculates these P delta or second order effects for me. So we'll change our analysis settings. We'll turn on large displacements again. My time stepping is already accounted for. So let's hit solve. Now let's look at our results. So for the axial force, you'll notice it's not actually constant along the length of the beam. And the reason that happens is because my force is always going to be horizontal but the beam section itself is rotating. So it's slightly reduced there at the end, not by a whole lot, uh, but at this point where my beam section is perpendicular to my application by force, we still, we still have, see that we have one million newtons in the axial force. On the flip side, you'll find that you have a shear force because again, that force is applied horizontally, but that cross section is rotating there. So there is a shear force here at this location. You'll notice from all these plots, it is plotting the, def the deformation. If I look at my deformation in the X direction, we can see that it's being stretched slightly. And my deformation in the Y direction, what happened to all that displacement? It turns out by putting that large axial force on the system, I've effectively straightened out that beam. So this result is dramatically different from the small displacement result where Ironically, my large displacement result has only about 10 millimeters of Y displacement, again, because that axial force is stretching or straightening out my beam. Now the bending moment is also going to vary along the length because again, there's a very large axial force here at the end and that has a moment arm around my support here so that it is going to change my moment. At the end where I have this concentrated moment applied, it's approximately one times 10 to the seventh Newton millimeters, but here just out of accident, it's actually almost zero. So from this, we can see that the large displacement analysis is doing a lot of things for us. For one, it's capturing the interaction between my axial forces, my bending moment and my shear forces. 
it's applying these loads as though they're on the deformed configuration rather than the undeformed configuration. And that makes a very big difference if you're trying to analyze second order effects or P delta effects. Lastly, though we didn't really touch on it here, your strain formulation is also nonlinear. So this works for any problem, not just beam problems, but any problem where you have a large displacement and large strains, you'll want to turn on this large def deflection analysis here. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. I will see you next time.